In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to sculpt an, a basic eye. This is not an anatomically perfect eye, but it has some nice features. We have a depressed iris that actually goes back. This is a bit more exaggerated than a real eye, um, but ultimately it will give us a better highlight or more accurate highlight. And it's an easy way if you don't want to have color to still see the shape of the iris when you're sculpting. We also, if you notice, don't have any highlight in the pupil. It absorbs all light there too, which also is really nice when you're when you're working. Again, this one's colored, but we can do the exact same thing without any color. And again, when you're sculpting, this is really nice just because you don't need to be distracted by any color or texture, and you can still see where the iris and the pupil are, which really helps you sculpt. If you want, also this is a uh, subdivision mesh, so it'd be easy if you want, just drop this to a lower resolution if you don't want anything quite as ridiculous as what I have here with 130,000 polys, or you can subdivide it even more if you need a smoother eye, easy peasy. All right, so uh, here we go. Let's let's see how to make this eye happen. Oh, one more thing. I should mention, you notice that this is um, does not have a lens on it. So a normal eye would actually have a lens here that actually sticks out from the eye. Um, I'm not doing that just because it's unnecessary. I'm just using this as a basic eye for sculpting. So I don't need anything that dramatic. Um, and ultimately for rigging, I actually prefer a spherical eye if I don't need to have something hyper real, just because it's much, much easier to rig. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're going for the hyper real. I'm sure there's some great tutorials on YouTube out there somewhere on how to do that in ZBrush. This is just for a basic eye to work with. Here we go. I'm gonna begin by just grabbing a Sphere 3D, pulling it in, pressing T for the edit mode, and then making it a polymesh 3D. Um, sometimes the polymesh 3D gives it a really deep, a really dark color, which when I'm trying to see my uh, edge loops makes me a little annoyed. So I'm just gonna go to my poly groups down here, just choose group visible until it gives me a brighter color. That works out just fine. I'll leave it up. We're gonna be using that in a minute anyway. I'm just gonna rotate um, my camera to the side. I'll use my the head up here to tell me which where I'm actually pointed. It's a nice addition for this uh, version of ZBrush. I'm just gonna choose rotate or you can press R and then holding in shift, I'm gonna rotate this until it's pointing forward and then move my camera back here. So now we have the edge loops um, uh, concentrically moving away from a point uh, pointing towards us where the eye would probably point anyway. Um, we'll go back to the draw or you can press Q now this is gonna be a little bit too low of a resolution, believe it or not, for what we wanna do. So I'm gonna actually up res this. I'm gonna do it now. It'll give me a better quality eye in the end. So I'm gonna go over to my geometry. It's gonna subdivide this. I'm gonna subdivide it. Uh, I think I'm gonna do it twice, which I know is extreme, but it'll definitely give me a better result. I can always drop this back down later. So, so now I have a nice smooth eye to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a, um, for this one I'm gonna apply a toy plastic standard material. This will allow it to respond to light. If you prefer, you can use one of the, the matte caps, but there's not a lot of great shiny ones to pick from here. So most of the shiny ones are down here. This toy one is crazy shiny. So just be prepared when you use it. It's gonna be pretty intense. Um, I'm gonna choose a color, just a base color for my eye. It's gonna be kind of an off pink. So kind of off white pinkish color. Uh, once I have my material and color, I'm just gonna make sure I'm, I'm one of my basic tools here, and then just click on the MRGB, turn off the Z add. I'm gonna go to uh, color, and I'm going to fill object with this color and material. I have a button down here to do this, but just so you guys can see where it is, but if you wanna make your own button, you can just use the customize menu and drag your button down here. I'm now gonna do a mask and uh, to create, uh, to, to separate out my iris, and then we'll create a polygroup out of that. I will just hold in control for mask. And then over here I'm gonna select circle, which I already selected it. Normally of course defaults to dots, but so I'll go to circle. And then I'm gonna choose center, which forces it to actually uh, originate from the center of the mouse out. And then square, which will force it to be a perfect circle. So even all the way around. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then put my, um, my mouse right in center. Should snap there under that center vertice, and then pull out my iris. Now, a smaller iris is gonna be a little bit more um, realistic, so something like this will be more realistic. Um, if you want something more cartoony, you can go a little bit wider, it just depends on what you're, what you're looking for. So um, I'll do something a little bit more realistic here, something like this. Now, if you get uh, these variations here like this, we wanna redo the mask, that's not good for us. 
Uh, we want this to be nice and smooth. It means you're a little bit off of center. So I'm just going to hold in shift as I move my my um, window around to make sure that I'm actually locked in. And then once I try one more time, get it right in center. I'm going to take a couple tries. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Come on now. Let's move in. Get a little bit closer. If you're a little bit off of center, this is when you get that, that variation, but it's going to make a really bad mask, so I don't want that. There we go. So that's bigger than I wanted, but for now we'll go with it. So do make sure that uh, whatever you ended up with, uh, you end up with a nice smooth uh, mask. I suppose at this point, if we wanted to, we could always go into masking and we could just reduce it. So if you want to, you can go under here and I can choose shrink mask and then I can sharpen the mask back up. So you can shrink and sharpen until you get the size that you want. Great. Um, with this now selected, I just want to double check and make sure I don't have it selected on the back side, which of course I do. So I just want to take that part of the mask off. Um, I'll just keep it on my circle, holding Control, Alt, and just drag a circle around that back side so only the front is masked. Easy to forget. I'm going to now turn on my polygroups so I can see my polygroups. And with this area now masked, I'm going to choose under my polygroup menu, Group Masked. So this should give me a new color for there. Double check again, we're not in the back, good. I'm now gonna follow the exact same procedure for my pupil. So I will just hold in my mask, draw my pupil size. Make sure it's even around, so I'm gonna have to do it a couple times until I get just the right selection here. Um, if you have a lower density mesh, this is easier, but this will if you can kind of suffer through this part, you'll end up with a better looking, um, a better looking eye overall. Your groups will be a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna to go to the back side and just remove the people in the back. So we just have that one right there. Go back to my polygroups and then once again, we'll do under the polygroups, uh, where is it, group masked. This should give us, if I remove my, my masks, this should, and we'll turn off the polygroups so it's easier to see. I'm sorry, turn off under here, not the polygroups. Um, I want to turn off the line fill so that, or the line, not the fill, so I can see my polygroups much easier. So now I have my pupil, I have my iris, oops, my iris and my eyeball. And I did this in complete reverse order, but you, can, you guys get the idea. Again, double check to make sure you don't have those same things in the back. If you do, you're gonna to wanna to regroup those. Or you can just, uh, under your polygroups, you can just, um, uh, reverse these, make the ones visible. You need to you know, get rid of these guys here, uh, make the back ones visible, and then you can just choose group visible to, to reassemble all those if, if you do that. I've done it more than a few times. So um, I made that mistake more than a few times. So now we're ready to go. We have um, our basic eye color, we have our basic material, and we have our polygroups, and now we can create our uh, sculpt out our iris and our pupil. Okay, so the hard part is done now. Um, now we can just use the polygroups to really e to easily set up our sculpt and if you want to um, also textures. So we'll do the sculpt first. I'm going to go ahead and select the, um, using the polygroups holding control and shift, I'm going to select the uh, eye here and then uh, click drag in the uh, off the eye to reverse that selection and now I have both the pupil and the iris selected. Um, with these selected, I'm going to hold in control. I'm going to go to my rectangle. And now I'm going to just grab, mask these off. With these masked off, I'll hold control and shift again and bring back my eye. But now I have a perfect mask right here. I'm going to hold in control and click off the, the eyeball to reverse the mask. So the only thing that I can now move is the iris and the pupil together, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to choose my standard brush here. Um, you can play with different brushes here, whatever you want. I'm just going to make the sucker really big. Increase my focal shift a bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead, um, turn off the MRGB, turn on Z add. And I'm just going to push in here. Um, and actually, here, turn off that lazy mouse too. And then also, I'm going to turn off my polygroup. So I'm just looking at the eye itself. So just the surface. I'm going to go ahead and push in here. You know, that was actually hard to look at. Let me turn my lines back on. I think I went a little crazy and I pressed the wrong direction. So let me try again, um, hold an alt and push in. All I want is just a little bit of pressure in. Looks like my intensity is really high here. So I'm just gonna drop my intensity way low 
and try again. I'm just looking for, again, a little bit of pressure in there. And this is a little confusing, but once you see what I'm going for, it'll make sense. Let me bring my focal shift in a little bit so it fades a little bit on the edge. Once again, just push in there. You don't need to get this perfect because ultimately we're going to smooth it anyway. I just want to get it so we have a bit of a divot. And then I'm just going to hold in shift and smooth it out. With this high resolution, you're going to need to shift, uh, have a pretty, a pretty intense, uh, your high intensity on your smooth for this to actually uh, not take forever. But once you have that, we now have a nice divot. Now I could keep going and kind of push this to get a little bit more of a perfect dish, but that's actually pretty nice, and that is actually what the iris does. Um, it ends up giving you kind of a reverse highlight in here. So um, we're going to use that same procedure to do the pupil. So I'm um, typically, I'd, I'd actually want to normally push in a little bit more in the center. So I could actually try to re-sculpt this a little bit. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. I'm sure I'll regret this. Just push in a little bit here and then smooth. Just to get more of an even dish. That's a little bit better. It's probably a little deeper than it should be, but that's okay. Um, we're going to be pushing in the... Um, uh, Sorry, we're gonna be pushing in the pupil anyway, so it doesn't matter that much, but let me just, just kind of soften it up. Somewhere right in there. All right. Once I had this, I'm gonna do the exact same procedure on the pupil now. I'm gonna push this in so we're a little bit smaller. This one you can be a little bit more severe with. So I'm gonna, again, just choose my, holding control and shift, choose my pupil, and then, uh, sorry, that was, Wrong, and then I'm going to um, mask it with my rectangle, bring back my eye, and then reverse my mask. Again, and that's just hold and control, and then tap off the object, and now the mask should be reversed. It doesn't look reversed. I'm just going to double check it. Ah, uh, so when I masked my, let me try that one more time. I do want it to mask the entire eye just to be safe. So one more time, I'm going to clear my mask just. Control drag off here. Um, I'll just tap the middle so I only have my pupil. Mask that out. Make sure I get the whole thing. Looks like I got a highlight on there. It's confusing. Um, then I'm going to control shift and bring back my eyeball and then control tap to reverse the mask. There we go. That's what I want. I don't want just that pupil um, unmasked. So with that unmasked, I can now use my standard brush and I can move this, push this really far back. So here, if you want to up your intensity, go for it. Um, I'm going to put on my wireframe so I can see what happens here, but I'm going to push way in. It's going to get pretty funky, but I can use my shift to smooth it out. I don't care too much just because what I really need here is a big hole. It looks like it went a little too crazy. I don't think I've ever pushed it back that far that quickly, so let me undo that. There we go, that's plenty deep right there. So, gives me a little warning there. It's gonna shift and smooth it out. That's plenty deep. I just want this to be a hole uh, so it's not catching light so easily. We're gonna fix that anyway with the material, but uh, this will just make it a little bit better, a little bit tighter. So, um, now I can get rid of my mask. And so that's my eye. Now, if you want to, if you don't plan on texturing this, you can be done right here. This will actually be a great looking eye for just sculpting on. You can save this out. In fact, maybe I'll save this out. Um, you can save this out and use it in any of your models, put it in there. The downside, of course, is that we're stuck with this size iris and this size people, which is going to change on a per character basis. But um, I'll just go ahead and save this out. Now, if you want to go a little bit further and you want to add some color or if you want to play with materials a little bit so you have a little bit more control, easy to do with our masks. So I'm going to bring my mask back. I'm going to get rid of that line, which I don't need anymore. And we can use these to go ahead and paint some color. So let's go ahead. Actually, I don't even need that. We don't need the polymer groups on because I can actually physically see them now, which is nice. That's one of the advantages of sculpting it like this. So um, I'm just going to choose a color. Again, I'm not like trying to paint this. I'm just trying to choose a basic color so that I can... Um, uh, just connect my character a little bit more and make these look a little bit tighter. So this would be set up for a full, you can paint these later on, doesn't matter, but for right now, I just want to have um, 
uh, some basic colors in there. If you want at this point, you can also up res this so you can see that my highlights are a little bit gran uh, granular. If that's bothersome to you, remember that you're going to typically be far much farther back. So keep that in mind. If you're going to do extreme close up, then yeah, you might want to up res. If you do up res, it'll actually smooth this out a little bit more, which isn't such a bad thing. Um, for right now, I'll just leave it. But again, remember that you can just up res if you need to under geometry and divide. So at this point, I'm just going to grab uh, Control Shift and click on my iris. And then I'm going to click my MRGB, but our MRGB, MRGB button, undo my Z add, and I'm going to keep my toy plastic. I'm just going to paint in really quick a green color. Again, you can paint here something more dramatic if you want, um, or you can do a full texture, whatever you need to. So that gives me my iris. And then for the pupil, the same, same basic operation. I'm going to select my pupil here. Um, the difference here, I'm going to select a flat um, material. So where's my flat, flat color? And I'm going to switch over to pure black and then paint this pure black. This will make sure that it doesn't get any highlights or cap capture any light. It is actually a hole. So I do not want to capture any light. And then um, just remove my mask and we are good to go. We have a eye that both captures light correctly, um, doesn't capture light in the pupil, uh, and it'll work out well for our character. At this point, you can just pull it in and append it as a subtool, and you're good to go. I'll save this out as a colored eye. And again, with the polygroups on there, you can always change the color of the iris anytime you want or make easy adjustments. So hopefully that was useful to you, and happy sculpting.